just knowing there's a professor out there who empathizes, it makes me feel like we're not alone in this, you know. Students, faculty, staff, and teaching assistants are all under more stress than usual. If ever there was a time for a pedagogy of kindness, it's now. This week, the new normal will be hosted by Fiona Rawl, a professor of biology at the University of Toronto, Mississauga, who discusses the importance of kindness in our work. This term, I'm teaching a large introductory biology class with nearly 1,000 students. And in this class, we are cultivating a pedagogy of kindness. This means creating a culture of communication, flexibility, understanding, and collaboration. Hi everyone, we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Okay, perfect. Professor. Some of you are sending me private messages about a bucket list, that's great. Hi Professor, can I just ask, is this Professor, tomorrow during the midterm, are we able to have the Master in Biology open? I believe that a pedagogy of kindness is so important right now because we, of course, are living and working through rather traumatic times. This is Anne Gagné, an educational developer at the Robert Gillespie Academic Skills Centre at the University of Toronto, Mississauga. And so a pedagogy of kindness would be part of that trauma-aware approach, right? Where we are aware that we are living and working through a a traumatic time. And once we know this, then we can move more towards a trauma-informed approach that has kindness, that has uh, safety, and that really builds a relationship of trust between the learner and the instructor, but also a relationship of trust between the students themselves. So, you know, in a time where we're socially distanced, I think that it's more important than ever to approach things with this pedagogy of kindness. We need to foster dialogue and learn about the student experience. We need to purposefully bridge the professor-student divide. We ourselves, we are all human. We are all struggling. This is Nicole Caetano, a first-year undergraduate student. Especially a first-year student now having to do it online in a pandemic with obviously everybody has very different family expectations and responsibilities we need to attend to and having a professor for me that understands that is something that makes me more willing to learn and to do well to exceed and to exceed every boundary and every obstacle that I want to overcome um, it just makes me more willing and more disciplined more determined to always want to learn more. Kindness helps to foster connection, and we know that the more connected our students feel, then the better they learn. We want students to know that they are more than a number. It's actually, it's tough, you know, sometimes we as students feel isolated, we feel scared. This is Faria Hussein, also a first year student at UTM not just over school, but over life in general. We feel anxious about COVID, about not seeing family enough, or like we just feel anxious about making time for ourselves and our mental well-beings and our physical well-beings. When we are socially distant and also learning online, it can be easy to feel alone. So we need to purposefully build connections. We know that students learn better when they feel connected to peers and connected to their professors. Connection is more important now than ever before. We feel as though sometimes we're doing too much work, sometimes we're not doing enough. (laughs) And we're in this constant battle with ourselves, wondering if we're good enough, if we're fit out for university, if we're fit out for post-secondary. Having a framework of kindness to your pedagogy won't just support the one student that seems to be having you know, a bad day or needs a little bit of extra time on an assessment, but it actually makes the learning a more positive experience for everyone. So for example, one part could be about the course design and how you design your courses, especially in terms of when assignments are due. One thing to consider in the pedagogy of kindness is how we approach assessment. Can our assessment be more flexible, more open, For example, all the tests and exams in this course are open book. 
When students graduate with a degree, we don't want them to regurgitate lists of facts they have memorized. We want them to ask interesting questions and know how to find the answers to those questions. And that's what guides this course design. In the Bio 152 class, I feel that um, the encouragement of learning is something that is placed on a very high pedestal. This is Nicole again. In class, we always talk about how it's essential to make mistakes, um, to fail, to not do well, to not understand, because that learning environment places more emphasis on learning instead of just attaining an 80 or a 90 or, or a high mark, right? We call it FLIP, F-L-I-P, failure dash learning in progress. We need to be comfortable with being wrong. It's only by being wrong that we discover where the limits of our knowledge and understanding are. And through this, we are emphasizing the goal of progress, not perfection. Um, so the experience in this class is that you emphasize growth. We emphasize that it's important to take a break and step back and that not doing well as much as we all strive to want to do amazing is essential to learning because if we were all experts at everything, we wouldn't be in a class and we wouldn't be learning from a teacher. When the pandemic hit, it was a reminder of how important it is to take perspective, to understand the challenges that different people face, and to support one another in developing solutions and overcoming these challenges. To be honest with you, by far, Biology is my favorite class this semester. This is Faria again. Um, I've had a great experience with this approach and other professors don't do this as much, which is okay, but this method, I find it super helpful. Um, I truly enjoy bio because I can try to catch up and do it at my own pace when I just get overwhelmed. I take a step back, I relax, and then just knowing there's a professor out there who empathizes and like um, helps immensely because you know, like you were a student once as well and you just understand how during these times it's not that easy. Something that helped me overcome this really big challenge um, was just knowing that we are all in this together and um, it's not just the students who are struggling. It's very easy to forget that Teachers are also parents, um, have their own families, of course, and outside lives outside of school. We have to be kind to each other and kind to ourselves, and remember that we are all works in progress. And for me, I want to keep this pedagogy of kindness going forward. I think it's something that should become a permanent fixture of our teaching and learning environment. Being more kind now is actually setting, um, you know, a framework and a foundation for what our pedagogy is going to look like once the pandemic is over. A pedagogy of kindness will create a framework that will trickle down um, for years. Okay, we'll see you later. Good luck, you'll be fine. See you, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Fiona Roll for The New Normal.